All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I have 1.30 my time, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm, I'm really grateful that you've decided to spend another a half an hour with me as we walk through some resources for our resource pop-up today. Um, we'll have folks kind of coming in as we get started, but I'm going to go ahead and jump in since we do only have that 30 minutes. So I want to welcome you guys. I feel free to type into chat. Yep, people are letting us know. Oh, Luann's from North Carolina. So welcome, Luann. Um, let us know who you are and where you're from in the chat. Um, I'm Dana Childress. I'm one of the early intervention professional development consultants on Virginia's um, professional development team. I have some colleagues who are backing me up. Lisa is here and Seth is here. Um, they're, they're in the background helping out with things too. So I'm really grateful for that. So what we're going to do today is we are going to move through a four-step plan that has eight, but kind of more than eight resources to help you train coaching fidelity observers. Um, you guys got a copy of the handout was attached to the login email. And I know Lisa will drop that link into chat. So download that plan because it has links to all of the resources we're gonna talk about today. We are kind of going to take a choose your own adventure approach. It was my favorite kind of books when I was a kid um, because there are so many resources. We may or may not get to all of them in a half an hour. But what I'll do is when we walk through the steps of the plan, I'm going to let you guys tell me which resource to highlight, which one to start with first. And then we'll get through, you know, we'll get through others if we have a chance to. If we don't get through the run you were really hoping we would touch on, um, know that you have on the, that the staff development plan, the PDF handout, there's hyperlinks to all of the resources so you can check them out on your own after today and get a feel for them and see which ones you want to integrate into how you're training coaching fidelity observers wherever you are. So before we do, I would love for you to type into chat and let me know what are you already doing in your programs now to, um, to train, to provide some training and support to those who do the fidelity observations as part of the fidelity assessment process. So in Virginia, when we talk about fidelity assessment or fidelity observers, those folks are watching to see, they go out and see, are we implementing coaching practices with fidelity, you know, according to how we're supposed to. So what are you doing now to help train and support the, the fidelity observers in your programs or your system, or maybe Luann for your state, what's happening now to make sure folks are able to observe those practices so that we're working towards fidelity. What's that look like now in your programs? And I'll tell you this morning on the resource pop-up this morning, I asked that question and I got a lot of crickets for a while. And then folks were popping into chat saying, I'm not actually sure. So it's really okay if you're not sure because you came to the right place to find out some good resources you can use to train your folks going forward. So I'll pause just for a minute or two more to see if anything pops up in chat and then we'll keep going. Oh, Anna, that's good. So they've watched the coaching module. So I think, are you talking, Anna, about the Texas coaching module? Yep. Johanna says the Texas coaching module. Great. So that's a resource we're going to talk about today. Yeah, that's a super great resource. And as you'll see on the next slide here, that's a requirement for our coaching fidelity observers. So for those of you, um, and Anna says they have several master coaches, which is such a resource too. So I'm not actually going to teach you about the requirements in Virginia, but I wanted to just flash it up on the screen for those of you who, who might not know. We do have requirements in Virginia for who can become a qualified fidelity observer. We also have a required fidelity assessment process. So that's always the place to start to get familiar with the requirements. Um, and then that can help you move forward to figuring out who in your system is going to help you guys um, fulfill those requirements. So Heather says it's a part of her state's credentialing process. However, we're currently not providing ongoing training to our CSPD coaches. That's okay, Heather. You know, I think I think all of us are trying to build capacity for coaching in lots of different ways. So hopefully this will be helpful to give you some ideas of where to go for some training resources. So when you guys think about who's going to be a fidelity observer, or maybe so like Heather said, who's going to be their coaches in their system? What is it really important that those leaders, those people know how to do? Or what are they is important that they know if they're going to be observing others and observing others' uh, fidelity or coaching practices, what do they need to know? So remember in Virginia, our coaching fidelity, of our observers really are focusing on coaching. Other states might focus fidelity obs observation on something else, but for Virginia, what do you think it's important that fidelity observers need to know or be able to do?
I'm just pausing for a little bit to let you guys think it out and type it up in the chat. What do our fidelity observers need to know if they're going to be in the position of conducting these observations of other people? Thanks, Anna. She says, understand how to distinguish between the yeses and nos and be consistent. So yeah, that's a great point, Anna. They certainly need to know that fidelity tool. So in Virginia, we use the coaching and action checklist, which I'll show you guys in a second. So they need to really know how to use the tool and how to figure out how to really, I mean, score it is like air quotes, but how to figure that out. Johanna says they need consistency in their observations. Yep, the yeses and nos and how to reflect with the coachee. That's super important. So they need to not only know how to fill that out, they need to know about coaching and what they're looking for, how to fill it out, but then what to do with it afterwards so that the process is a growth and a learning process for um, the person being observed. We certainly don't want people feeling like they're being observed and watched and it's a scary process. It's always a little uncomfortable to be observed, but this is a professional development process. So we, we wanna make sure we're, we're supporting people with that kind of knowledge. So thank you guys. All right, so let's go next and think about step one. So step one is really kind of, I guess first, you've identified who in your system you would like or is interested in serving as a fidelity observer. We wanna make sure those people have a really good foundation in coaching practices. So like I said, in Virginia, we use the Rush and Sheldon early, coach, early childhood coaching approach. So all of our practitioners are expected to know about and be able to implement coaching with families. Our qualified fidelity observers need to know how to observe it, what to look for, and then how to like, like Chana said, how to provide that feedback. So we'd wanna get them grounded just to make sure that, you know how in early intervention, we all say we're coaching, but coaching could look differently depending on what you're doing. So these are four resources to get started. We have the Texas module that we've mentioned that's the, called Coaching Families. It's a free module that Texas is allowing other states to access. Couple of hours, got great videos. It's a really good resource, a great place to start. Then speaking of videos, we have a set of videos from Connecticut's Birth to Three system. They partnered with uh, Rush and Sheldon to do um, about a 20, 22 minute video um, about the five characteristics of coaching. And then, uh, thanks Lisa, she's dropped the handout in again. And then here we have the checklist, the coaching and action checklist that our folks would need to be familiar with because that outlines those five characteristics again. And then we have a topic page on the Virginia Early Intervention Professional Development Center site um, that has lots and lots of good coaching and early intervention resources. So what I want you guys to do is you're going to use your stamp tool or your annotations tool to put a stamp or draw a line or a check mark on one of these four um, resources to let me know where we should go first. Where to, what resource do you, are you really interested in learning more about? So to access your stamp tool, look at the top of your screen where it says viewing Dana Childress's screen. Look for the little downward carrot or downward arrow, click on that, click annotations, Open, that opens up a horizontal window, a little um, toolbar, and then use the tool of your choice, stamp, arrow, draw, whatever. And you can um, then drop your stamp to click again on the screen to drop your little icon where you wanna, um, which tool you're interested in. If all else fails, just use the chat. So Cindy's got it. Cindy put, puts the topic page in. Where, let's see, and I see Johanna up in videos. We've got Heather in videos. I'll just give you guys a second. Remember, chat is also an option if the tools are um, a little too much for you after lunch. Now oh, we've almost got a tie, I think. Let's see, so I'm gonna go to videos first. I'll show you the coaching videos first, then we'll look at the topic page. So let's always cross our fingers that the hyperlinks work. Here we go. So um, Connecticut partnered with the Hartford Foundation to have these videos produced. They're free, they're available on this page. You can get them through YouTube. And one of the things I love about them, it's a short video, the full video, I believe is like 22 minutes, something like that. But then what they did is they divided the video up into chapters, which I think is super handy. So you'd want a new Fidelity Observer or a new staff person learning about coaching to watch the whole video. But say that you really wanted to do some training specific to observation or specific to reflection, super important with our fidelity assessment process. You could just highlight those shorter videos and kind of target where you wanted to go. 
supervisors could also send these videos out like once a week to your staff just to kind of help bump that bump them up you know give them a little boost in what they understand about coaching these are great for staff development but certainly good for our training our fidelity observers as well all right so let me go back you guys said the topic page so i will show you that so maybe let's see I'm actually, I was going to drop links in the chat, but I think I'm not going to just to keep us going since you have all of the links hyperlinked in your handout. So know that those are there. So on our, our site, the veipd.org site, we have a coaching and early intervention page where you can find pretty much all of the resources we're going to talk about today. But it's a really good go-to place when you're trying to figure out what do you want to do when training your coaching fidelity observers. Um, you've got lots of good handouts. We're actually going to um, talk about some of these in a moment. We've got stuff for service coordination, service coordinators, which is handy. You can actually find tools here that we've been talking about. Um, and I will show you the coaching and action checklist because I didn't show that before. I know that was one of our tools. But for anybody not familiar, this is what we were talking about when we said knowing how to score the yeses and the nos. So lots of good resources there. We've got videos, we've got archived webinars um, in case you wanna go back and have your folks brush up um, there. We also have the link here to the Texas module, or the Coaching Families module. So that's a whirlwind tour, but just know that that's a good place to go to find the resources we're gonna talk about today. Okay, and so the Texas module sounds like folks were familiar with really good one because I love the videos and the opportunity for reflection in the Texas module. It gives your it gives your staff some opportunity to watch it, learn about it, and then reflect. Texas has its own fidelity checklist in this module, so I'll give you a heads up. Um, Virginia, we have a different fidelity checklist, so we encourage you to, watch, to take the Texas module, but then at the end, when the reflection activities come up, use the Texas or use the Virginia coaching and action checklist during your observations of the videos in the module. That way they get some practice there. All right, so that's step one, building coaching, knowledge skills with coaching. Once you feel good that you're this potential train, a fidelity observer has got a real good foundation in coaching, next we want them to build their knowledge and skills related to Virginia's fidelity assessment process. Um, because like I said, different states have different processes. So especially if you have somebody that moves from another state, we want to get them grounded in, in Virginia's approach. Two good resources here. So on our state's new website, which is, I love, so much easier to find things, they have um, the Infant and Toddler Connection of Virginia resource library. In the resource library, there is a section for fidelity assessment with lots of good resources. So it's another really good place to stay. And there are things in that resource library that are not on the, the our coaching and early intervention page I just showed you. So it's really good to check both of them out. We also have a handout called Key Principles of Fidelity Assessment that was developed by the EI Leadership Group of Northern Virginia, a fantastic resource that goes through the five coaching characteristics, what they look like, what they don't look like related to fidelity assessment. So very, very helpful. Um, so again, use your annotation tool, drop your stamp and let me know which of these two resources we're gonna go visit. You might have time for both, but let me know which one are you more interested in taking a look at? And again, always you can use chat as your backup. All right, I see Anna and Heather hot topped right in on that resource library. Anybody else wanna take a vote? Johanna says the checklist, so let's, oh, and both of them, right? Let's take a look at both. We'll start with the resource library. All right, so I, I actually love this resource library. There's a lot there. Um, so I'm gonna scroll down. So you can see, I guess uh, you get what's really nice thing. They have a, there's a, um, in the menu at the top, there's a direct link to the resource library. So it's pretty easy to find once you go to the, um, the ITCVA website. But you'll scroll down and you'll see, let me pull it up a little more, that there's an item for fidelity assessment. That's where you want to go. You click on the little plus and you get your drop down menu with lots of good tips and all in here. Um, some FAQs, you've got some at a glance resources, again, the coaching and action checklist with a writable PDF, which is super handy. Um, and I love this. There are two webinars that and links to two webinars, preparing for fidelity assessment for the observers and supervisors and one for providers. So um, 
super, Joanna says, sorry, I went nuts with my star. That's okay. I'm glad you did. We're going to go see both resources. So you are all good. Um, but just know that there's some really great resources here under the Fidelity Assessment um, drop down menu that I would encourage you to take a look at. Now let's go take, go see this, um, the key principles of Fidelity Assessment handout. And Anna, I don't remember if you were part of developing this. So if you have anything else to add about this, feel free to add it in chat. Whoops, let me get there. There we go. So it's just a really nice four page resource um, that goes through, like I said, the five coaching characteristics. It uses the looks like, doesn't look like approach, like we've seen from our mission and key principles of early intervention. Um, but I love how we have examples in here. We kind of have definitions of some of the key concepts. Um, just a really good training resource and kind of a reference tool for folks as they're learning to um, conduct fidelity observation. All right, let me get us back to the slideshow. Okay, so we've got a foundation in coaching, building knowledge with the fidelity assessment process. Next, we would want our folks to take a deeper dive in how to actually conduct the fidelity coaching fidelity observation. Because it really is one thing to know about coaching and to even be familiar like cognitively with the process. It's a different thing when you're sitting in the home or on, in the Zoom room or the Microsoft Teams room, whatever, conducting the, the assessment. So we've got two really good resources and I'm actually gonna just go right in and show you both of them um, because I wanna make sure you're aware of them. The first here is um, one we developed two years ago. The second is a brand new resource that just came out this summer. So let's take a look at the guidance document. Well, possibly if the link works. All right, this is gonna go a little wonky again with my PowerPoint, but we're gonna make it work. All right, here we go. So the guidance for using the coaching and action checklist for fidelity assessment um, has a link to our coaching and action checklist, the yes, no document I showed you, fidelity requirements, this is what I showed you about who can be qualified observers, but here's the really, I think the really particularly helpful stuff for training. There's clarification and considerations for like what we talked about before, how to figure out when yes and no, which is yes or no is appropriate when you're completing the checklist. Lots of good resources in here to, point, to help, help you train your staff. And then here we have a table that gives you guidance for that scoring. So the, the guidance is laid out according to the coaching characteristic the items on the coaching and action checklist, and then gives you some things to think about how to figure out whether the yes or no works. Um, you, you will make that decision when you are doing your observations, but at least this is some helpful, give you some helpful, especially in places where it might be a little harder to, you know, sometimes it's a little harder because people practice in different ways. So know that that's a resource for you. So the other one I wanted to show you, I'm super excited about, is our Coaching Fidelity Observer video chat. So this summer, I recorded a video chat with four um, Fidelity Observers from different from programs around the state. Um, these were uh, physical therapists, two speech language pathologists, and a developmental service provider, all, many of them wearing multiple hats, you know, like program managers, other things too. But they spent time talking with me about their process. How do they conduct the observations and what strategies they had for others learning to conduct the process as well. So let's take a look at these. These are, um, like I said, they're new. We have them on our VEIPD videos channel on YouTube. So that's one place you can get them. Um, they're also linked to our, that coaching and early intervention um, topic page I showed you. Um, I know we know some programs have YouTube blocked. So unfortunately this is the place that we have these, but um, hopefully you can find a workaround or you can email me and we can see what we can come up with. Um, if your folks could watch it on their cell phone instead of their, their work laptop or whatever, um, but they're good resources. All of the videos are seven to 10 minutes long, so relatively short. They don't have to block a whole hour for a webinar. Um, and, and we have them divided up in topics. So the folks that joined me talked about the purpose of coaching fidelity observation and fidelity assessment, which I think is really helpful for a new person to have the words to explain it to others, to help um, practitioners explain it to families, to get permission to bring the observer along, um, but also to explain it to practitioners in ways that helps them feel safe and like this is a learning experience, not an not a experience where they're going to be judged as right or wrong. 
Um, we also had the, the conversation talked about preparing for the fidelity observation. And then my two favorite um, sections are conducting the fidelity observation and what to do afterwards. So that important piece we talked about in chat, what do you do with what you found? Um, we really do want to see folks doing more than just sending an email with some feedback. I'd love for you to be making time, encouraging your observers to make time to meet with the person they observed, to talk about their experience, um, talk about what went well, talk about great opportunities and missed opportunities during the visit um, so that it's a learning experience and the feedback is sort of open-ended and reciprocal so everybody's learning together. And then finally, the last video um, where um, the, the panelists talked about the benefits of coaching fidelity observation for the folks being observed, but also for them as observers, which I think is a great way to sort of encourage your staff to take on this role. So um, really good resources. I encourage you to check them out. And like I said, you could block 10 minutes a day over, over a week and knock all of these out. So do you have any questions um, about the video observation series or any of the any um, any of the resources so far? Feel free to type them in the chat. All right, so our last step in the process. Once you've got people pretty well trained, you've got them grounded in coaching and grounded in the fidelity assessment process, what they're supposed to do as observers. The last step I think I would encourage you is to go a little bit further and have them spend some time with somebody else who is a fidelity observer or have them spend time with your master coach, somebody else who does this role so they can get support themselves. So have them be observed and conduct observations with the support of a mentor or a master coach, because we wanna make sure that our qualified fidelity observers really do understand the process, are able to make those yes, no judgments and give that really supportive feedback to the folks that they're observing. So hopefully um, build a little time into that as well so that that new observer can get feedback and support as well. Thank you, Heather. Heather says fantastic resources. So that is it, you guys. We're gonna wrap up a few minutes early. I wanted to make sure you knew that the pop-up has been recorded. Um, it will be um, posted on our resource pop-ups page probably within the next two weeks. Um, we have a, I have a conference next week, so I'm not sure how fast I'll get this done, but fingers crossed pretty quickly. So you can visit this page for our other resource pop-up webinars that we've been hosting. I don't know, Lisa, maybe for the last two years. Um, but feel free to take care of that. We would also love for you to take a few minutes and take a survey to give us feedback. Lisa's dropped the survey link in chat and there's probably an email in your inbox with the link to our feedback survey as well. We really do take your, your feedback seriously. So please take just a minute or two to give us that feedback, we'd appreciate it. You're also welcome to follow us on social media and Lisa dropped those links in chat as well. That's where we make, we try to get the word out when we have our pop-ups and our other professional development opportunities. Um, that's a great place to find out about those. So that is it guys, any feedback or questions, feel free to type it into chat. I'll hang out for a few more minutes before I close the webinar, but thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. You're welcome, Heather. Thanks for joining us.